Can you find two goldfinches in this picture? Birds are everywhere, in trees, in the sky, hopping and walking along the ground and in water. And if we stop, slow down, and look carefully, we can learn so much by watching them. Just look at this hummingbird in the sunlight. Can you see its wings are a blur as it comes in to take a sip of sugar water from our feeder? Sometimes we find things that birds leave behind. Here is a blue jay nest and in it, if you look carefully, you can see the skeleton of a baby blue jay who didn't make it. We can also learn about birds from people we know, through books, and from online resources. Birders and bird watchers know a lot and they are very generous with sharing their knowledge. Let's begin at our vernal pool sit spot just as we do each week. Hello writing friends. I'm so glad you're here back at our sit spot on the side of the vernal pool where I am sitting looking for birds and listening for birds and hearing more birds than I am seeing. This week we will be thinking about birds and I'll be trying to draw some pictures of birds and writing about birds and thinking about the birds I have seen, the birds I love, the birds I hope to see. And I'd like to start off by reading you a book that I wrote. It's called Everyday Birds or in Spanish it's called Paros de Todos los Días. And I do not speak Spanish, so I'm going to do my very best to read a few pages of this to you in English and Spanish, and then I'll hold them up so that those of you who do know Spanish will be able to read them better than I can. This book is a scholastic book, and the cut paper illustrations are by Dylan Matrano, so each bird is made up of many pieces of paper. Everyday Birds, Pajaros de Todos los Días. Every day we watch for birds weaving through our sky. We listen to their calls and songs. We like to see them fly. Todos los días vemos pájaros volando por nuestro cielo. Los echujamos cantar y trinar. Nos gusta verlos azar el vuelo. Chickadee wears a wee black cap. J is loud and bold. Carbonero lleva una capa negra. Arandajo es aras y ridoso. Nuthatch perches upside down. Finch is clothed in gold. Trepador se posa boca abajo. Pinzón viste dorado lujoso. And then this book goes through many more birds. There are 20 birds here that we see around where we live. And it ends this way. Every day we watch for birds living right outside our door. We pay attention to the birds. Every day we learn some more. Todos los días vemos pájaros que vienen a vistanos. Todos los días Les ponemos atención y aprendemos a identificarlos. And at the very back, this is the whole poem, and then more information about birds. I like learning about birds. I married a man named Mark, who this book is dedicated uh, to, and he taught me a lot about birds. And so one of the beautiful things about being a person during the springtime is that we can sit and it does really help to close eyes when we listen. And we can hear all different kinds of birds and wonder who they are. And sometimes if we are very still, a bird will come and will land near us. So I wish you joy in looking at birds this week, in listening for birds, and, and in thinking about the birds that you know and the birds that you would like to learn more about. We can sit quietly in the field, watching and listening to birds, making pictures and taking notes in our nature journals. 
We can also draw and write about birds when we are inside, remembering what we saw, asking questions, and learning from pictures, books, videos, and other people. Hi, Wild Writers of Mamerida, kindergarten and first graders. Welcome to My Bird Blind. This is a card table with a natural colored blanket over the top. It could also have been a refrigerator box or a dishwasher box with little slits cut into the sides so that I can look out and see the birds and they don't see me moving around in my chair. You can make a bird blind in your yard if you want to with a table like this and you'll fit better than I do. Or you could make a bird blind in a box or if you do a table like this, let me give you a suggestion. If you have a sheet or something that your parents say you can use that you can cut, I would cut slits into the side because then you can peek out without lifting the sides of your blind. That's something I'm going to be looking for is a piece of fabric somewhere in my house that I can cut some slits in and make my own bird blind because guess what? One thing you can do with your friends if you want to, even if you can't get together, is you can have a bird watching club. This book talks, this book, Backyard Birding for Kids by Fran Lee, talks a little bit about that. You can just have some friends and talk about what birds you know, what birds you see, share pictures of your nature journals with each other, and then say, let's look for this kind of bird this week, or let's learn this song this week. We did get to learn from Sheldrake this week that a lot of facts about birds. We learned about their feathers. Anthony Waring taught us about different things about their their bills or their beaks. We learned about what different calls and songs some birds make and that things that birds do in nature make other things happen sometimes. So if one bird makes an alarm call, other birds might fly away. There's a cause and effect with birds, which means, as with everything, which means once something happens, something else might happen. So at my feeder here, if one bird comes and then a different bird, bigger bird comes, the first bird might fly away. The larger bird coming will cause the other bird to fly away, right? So if it rains, that cause, then birds might go for shelter. That's the effect. If my husband fills our bird feeders, and that cause will bring an effect of birds all coming. So when we look at birds, just like when we looked at spring wildflowers and when we look at other things in nature, we notice certain patterns. We learn what they look like so that each time we see a certain bird, we know it is that kind. If I look at a bright, red bird in my yard, I know that that will be a male cardinal because male cardinals always have that bright red pattern. I know it will have a short, sharp, short, sharp little seed cracking beak or bill because that's what male cardinals have. Those pattern bits add up equals male cardinal. So I want to show you what I did in my nature journal this week and suggest that you try the same thing. One thing I suggest is this. Try to learn five birds. The names and the colors, you don't have to know everything about them. That could take a lifetime to be an expert on five birds. But the names and the colors that you could recognize five different birds. I drew five little frames here, almost like school pictures. I know the ones I want to learn. I have learned many birds, but I want to learn the difference between a downy woodpecker and a hairy woodpecker. I want to learn about a raven because ravens are kind of like crows, but bigger. And a Phoebe, I want to learn about Phoebes because we have them in our barn. Can you hear there's a bee in here? And I want to learn about woodcocks, which are also called timber doodles, because there's one on our road and it makes a really cool mating sound, the male, when it flies up to attract the female. So I want to learn these. There is a website I will share with you later today called Sawmill River Audubon, and they list the 30 most common birds found in Westchester. And if you look there, any bird you see, you can click through of those 30 and probably it will be there. So learn five birds this week. That's a great thing to do because then your whole life, every time you see them, you'll say, I know what that bird is. That bird is red. It's a male cardinal. It matches the cardinal pattern. Or that bird has a little black cap and it's tiny and it says, dee, dee, dee. That's a chickadee. Or it's yellow. It's a goldfinch. You will learn birds and then birds can always be a friend to you. 
So that's one thing I suggest doing in your nature journal this week. And you'll see next time we meet that I'll add the pictures and the facts I learned that will help me know these five. Here's something else to think about. We can learn about birds a couple of different, many different ways, but one way is we can go to books and websites, and I will share some with you. I have a few books here, but you can look at websites if you don't have bird books at home. There are so many websites that give information, especially the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. That's where Sawmill River Audubon links over to. They have the calls. If you hear a bird and you want to find out what it is and you saw it, you can look it up, play the song back, and you can learn the song. So there's all kinds of books, all kinds of websites where you can explore and then match what you see in your backyard or at the park or at Sheldrake or wherever you go to what you read and what you talk to people about because you might well know some people who are birders. So learn five birds. And another thing is to sit outside, perhaps in a blind like I am sitting in right now, or maybe just very still and quietly in a chair or sitting on a towel on the grass, watching a place you know birds come. We learned earlier this week, you might want to choose a place near water or like Anthony's neighbor did, put out a garbage can lid with some water in it and dump it at night and you may attract some birds. If you have a bird feeder or your neighbor does or your grandparent and you can sit there, perhaps sit there and write and draw. And what I did is I did this and then I drew some what I'm calling bird stories. So I drew what looks like little bird cartoons. And then in the cartoons, I drew the pictures and then I wrote the words to go with what I noticed, what I saw happen in a bird story. Let me read you some of my bird stories that really happened in my bird watching this week. Here's the first one. I'll I'll read it and then I'll hold it up. One chickadee came to eat. Another chickadee came to eat. A woodpecker came and and pecked suet. Birds chased in trees. A blue jay flew by. Sun shined. And you can see, had arrows there showing each thing. And I will go back and color this in. I have another bird story for you. This is a shorter one. It just has two panels or two boxes and you'll notice more stamping, bird stamps I made. So this one, the first panel or the first box says, one woodpecker drummed on a tree, tap, tap, tap. And the second panel says, another woodpecker drummed on the barn, tap, tap, tap. And you can see the woodpecker in the tree is saying my tree and the woodpecker tapping on the barn is saying my barn because this is what woodpeckers do. They tap to show this is my territory. And I wrote bird stories over here. I have one more, I think. Yeah, I do. This one has two panels as well. My husband is in panel one. It says Mark filled the feeders. And the second panel says, a bird came to eat right away. So here's Mark. He's saying, dum de dum de dum And then the bird says, the chickadee says, thank you, yay for seeds. And I did, this is a faraway picture, and this is a close-up picture of the feeder, you can see. And the words are right beneath. And I wrote, where did I write? Bird story over here. So I'm doing a collection of bird stories. These are things I really see in my yard, birds I watch and I pay attention to. And if I don't know their name, that's okay. I can write a black bird came by or a bird with yellow on it came by or a a tiny bird with brown wings flew by me and landed on a tree. And I can write a bird story. And when I do that, that helps me pay attention to the birds and it helps me know them more. So I did also jot an I notice and an I wonder. I I noticed a heron flew by on our road. I wonder, do we have many new birds because of our neighbor's new pond? So this week, I am encouraging you to learn five birds. And you don't have to do it all this week. You can do it over a couple of weeks. But choose five birds that you see or that you're interested in, birds that live near you. And so that when you see them in the world, you can recognize them and try some bird stories of your own. I would love to see them. And then 
continue noticing and wondering. This is what bird watchers or birders do, and we do this outside in the wild or inside in books or outside in books or inside looking out windows. So happy bird watching, and I will see you next time. Take care. No music this time. Instead, let's watch and listen to birds. Notice the beaks. Notice the feathers. Pay close attention and feel free to pause and sketch and write. Many people think of robins as a sign of spring. Did you know that a robin can find and eat up to 14 feet of earthworms in one day? You can recognize a nuthatch by the way it perches upside down on trees or feeders. Northern flickers are a type of woodpecker. They mostly eat insects that they find in the ground. The first flicker you will see is a male. You can tell by the black spots on his face. There are so many ways and places to learn more about birds. At these two online resources, you can find out about feathers, nests, beaks, calls, songs, eggs, and everything bird. It is both inspiring and calming to pay attention to our feathered friends. Write wild, Mamaronic writers. Write wild. Thank you.